What we're trying to understand is how can the environment help um, not only educators but students really understand that the environment is part of their learning process. And so if you think about Reggio Amalio and the, and the work that they did almost a hundred years ago, they talked about the environment as the third teacher. And if you think about how we might be able to, to get away from a very static sort of passive environment which was much more teacher-centered as opposed to learner-centered or student-centered, the, the shift is really coming into more of a student-centered approach. And what does that mean? How can space or the, the physical environment help support that? So that's the focus of our work, is on active learning and all of the ramifications that that means, that people have to move, they have to have permission to move, they have to be able to use the verticality of space in order to be able to to express themselves. If you can't hear, there's too much noise, you can't see the content or the educator or your fellow classmates and you're not comfortable and you're not connected, then learning shuts down. So if you start to break those pieces of the environment apart, then you understand better about what's a more conducive place uh, for people to learn. When you open the door to a classroom and it's row by column seating, we're behaviorally conditioned individuals. So we'll go in there and we know the behavior that's expected of us as a student and that's going to be sort of sit and listen. We also know what's established for the educator. I'm going to stand and deliver. So we're trying to break those conditions down. If it continues to be row by column seating with uh, shoulder to shoulder learning, there's no activity there. You're not engaging your whole person in that, but it takes more square meters per person in order to move. So we look at opening that door, what does that space look like? To sort of immediately break down that, con that preconceived condition of the behavior that's going to be expected of me. So there, are, there shouldn't just be one solution, there should be many solutions. But now we can go into this kind of situation and say, how best can we help people move to learn? What does activity mean? And it's, it's a... It's, for the educator, it's controlling chaos. <laughs> so that might be the best way to explain that. There's so much evidence that would say the higher the level a student is engaged, the higher the probability that they'll be more motivated to attend class, they'll have higher learning outcomes, um, they'll actually be more engaged in the content uh, within the classroom. And so we look at this framework with, with a Venn diagram, pedagogy, technology, and space, Pedagogy for us is very um, purposely put at the top because we think it's really important to have an active educator. And technology and space are tools. We understand technology as a tool, but we don't often understand space as a tool. And so that, that is our active learning ecosystem framework, and we really focus a lot on, on that piece. I really admire the fact that you're working with educators to help them break down our mental blocks with, you know, this is the way we went to school, so isn't this the way we should teach? And actually cognitive neuroscientists would say, no, it's not the way we should teach. We should be really engaging the student and allowing them uh, to get to a deeper level of learning. And, by, and movement and kinesthetic components really help support that. So by changing posture, moving, it adds novelty to the brain, it adds oxygen when you start to move as well. So now you have these different places and uh, I think it's, it's going to be really good. I really like the way it's looking. So thanks for sharing that with me.